Now let us see the, some of the basic uh, principles of uh, organic compounds. So this is the mind map for the first chapter of uh, in organic chemistry of eleventh uh, grade, that is first PUC. So what are organic compounds? Organic compounds, uh, till nineteenth century, it is believed that the compounds are formed with the help of uh, vital force. This vital force theory was proposed by Berzelius, and this Berzelius theory was been rejected. Uh, by uh, Frederick Holler by synthesizing organic compound from an inorganic compound, ammonium cyanide or heating produced an organic compound that is urea. So by this, uh, the whatever the theory which was there, that is vital force or superstitious force which is required for the production of organic compounds, has been disproved. And uh, this, while from any organic compound, uh, Frederick Holler was able to make uh, urea, and later on Kolbe and other. Uh, a scientist has proved that it is not the vital force which is responsible for organic compounds. Later, these compounds are being derived as that is, organic compounds are derived as, I mean, defined as compounds of carbon. So basically, they are the compounds of carbon. The reason for compounds of carbon is why we have large number of compounds. So carbon compound is it is because of catenation. Catenation is the property of this carbon, which can form a bond with another carbon. Likewise, the C-C bond can continue, right? And this catenation, that is the repeatability of the carbon-carbon bond, is profound in the carbon, and that phenomenon is called as catenation. And these organic compounds are classified into uh, open chain compounds and closed chain compounds. Closed chain compounds are cyclic compounds. Whereas open chain compounds are called as acyclic compounds. So this is the broad classification. In this acyclic compounds, there are saturated compounds and unsaturated compounds. Why they are saturated and unsaturated? Let us see the carbon. Carbon is a tetravalent, and why it is tetravalent? Because of the hybridization. What is what is that hybridization? A combination of atomic orbitals of similar energy. Now what does it mean? Look here in the carbon, which has six electrons. The number of electrons on the carbon is 6, right? If you write the electronic configuration, it will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So this is the ground state electronic configuration, the distribution of electrons. So in the second orbit, we have 2s and 2p. 2s, 2 electrons are there, 2p, 2 electrons are there, right? In the first excited state, when it gives a small amount of energy, the electron from the 2s will just will jump into 2pz orbital. In this p orbital, there are three sub orbitals, p, x, p, y, p, z, and in this, uh, this uh, uh, the one which is there in the second that is the pyridine electron will move to pz orbital and thus will be having one two three four one s and three p uh, orbitals suborbitals so then this will have one unpaired electron so there are four unpaired electrons in this carbon and that needs to be paired so hence the number of electrons required for the pairing is one two three four so four electrons are required Hence, the valency of carbon is 4. It is a tetravalent. So, here how it happens? The hybridization takes place. What is hybridization? Merger or combination of 2s and 2p orbitals. So, these two orbitals of similar energy, almost same energy, merge or hybridize with one another to form the 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals. That is sp3 1, this sp3 2, sp3 4, 3, sorry, sp3 4. Now the four sp3 hybrid orbitals are formed and these four hybrid orbitals are responsible for tetravalency of the carbon okay this is sp3 hybridization in case if only 2p and 1s is uh, orbitals are uh, been you know have undergone hydro hybridization it leads to sp2 hybridization wherein the third electron of the pz will remain unpaired okay that is sp2 hybridization leads to one two three three numbers of sp2 hybrid orbitals and in this case so when this molecule the here it is a ethyl molecule in this there will be one pi bond the pi bond is mainly because of pz orbitals of this carbon and also pz orbital of another carbon right so in both the case sp2 hybridization will be there and because of the sp2 hybridization there will be one two three numbers of sp2 hybrid orbitals will form right and these are responsible for three sigma bonds one two three okay and also here one two three and uh, instead if one s and one p is combined right it will undergo hybridization you will be getting one and two two numbers of 
sp hybrid orbitals so this is one and this is other one right so that is uh, two sp hybrid orbitals so remaining py and pz orbitals are this py and pz orbitals of this carbon and py and pz orbital of this they and overlap sideways leading to the pi bond there are two pi bonds here there is one pi bond here in this case that is an sp3 hybrid orbitals there is no pi bond all are sigma bonds one two three four four sigma bonds are there okay so here you know sp3 hybridization sp2 hybridization uh, sp2 and sp hybridization so here number of s characters uh, in this sp3 is so total number of orbitals 3 plus 1 out of which one is sp uh, orbital so s is 1 sp uh, no, total number of orbitals are 4 1 by 4 is uh, 25 so 25% of s orbital s character is there whereas here out of 3 1 is s so 33.3% out of 2 1 is s that is 50% more the s, s character more will be the electronic drawing power so that means it becomes more and more acidic from here to here acidic character increases right acidic character increases or electronegativity increases or s character increases means more is the electronegativity of that orbital ah sorry of that carbon right which has sp hybridization so this is regarding sp3 sp2 sp hybridization and here we have the structures right the structure in bond line structure uh, then uh, Condensed structure, this is very important. Condensed structure for CF, methane is CH4, CH3, CH3 is uh, uh, ethane, and this could also be written as C2H6, so that is also written as C2H6, CH3, CH2, CH3 is a propane, or C3H7 is uh, H8, sorry, H8 is a propane, right? So that is condensed structure. And this is the complete structure wherein which all the bonds are shown CH3, CH3, all the bonds are shown. So this is also called as dash structure right okay we are between the elements there will be a dash or the bond so this will show all the bonds present within between the elements it's also called as complete structure or dash structure so this is for alkanes and this one is for alkene right so here saturated compounds means the one which has sp3 hybridization in unsaturated alkene in kin has in means double bond uh, in means triple bond so here this is sp2 hybridization this is sp3 this is sp2 this one is sp hybridization right so that leads to all kinds okay so this is regarding saturated or unsaturated alicyclic acyclic compound and among the cyclic compounds there are two one is homolytic uh, cyclic compounds that means in the cyclic compounds all the corners all are all the elements in the chain are in the circle or in the chain is carbon right carbon containing other elements so basically it is carbon 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 four carbons gives a cube and this one six one all six are carbons right yes okay that is aliphatic cyclic compound these are also aliphatic this is also aliphatic the difference between this and this is this is open chain structure whereas this one is closed chain structure this is closed chain structure so this is homolytic other one is aromatic compound so this is aliphatic where this one is aromatic the difference between aliphatic and aromatic is this will contain benzene if the compound contains benzene or benzeroid ring they are called as aromatic right so these aromatic compounds could be may contain benzene or may not contain benzene even without containing benzene it can act as an aromatic compound one example is tropolone is an example for time we know this so this is also aromatic benzene all benzene containing compounds are aromatic so in aromatic compounds there are two one is benzene compound containing compounds or benzenoid benzenoid compounds if it doesn't contain benzene then it is called non benzenoid still they are aromatic what is aromatic that is concerned with its behavior what is that behavior this burns with sooty flame there are these compounds burns with non sooty flame that means when you ignite in air right it will burn both all the hydrocarbons will burn this burns with almost a blue flame whereas this burns with yellow flame with black color soot right so these two burns with black color uh, now that is soot particles black color particles are soot particles right okay so the reasons will be explained later uh, when while discussing the aromatic compounds then under nomenclature nomenclature of any compound will have three major components root word it will tell the number of carbons suffix will tell the family 
right so that will tell the family to which uh, they belongs to the family or functional group if at all this root chain that main carbon chain has some other groups right other than hydrogen uh, then other of groups are co comes under prefixes right so prefix suffix and root word so name of the compound will contains a root word suffix that is main on this main compound there may be some substituent one of the element of this group this root word or the of this uh, this family will be replaced by some other special group and that will be normal written as prefix right so for this nomenclature the rules are been proposed by iupac international union of pure and applied chemistry the basic uh, law rule is this select the longest possible chain okay so that longest possible chain will give the root word suffix will be given will give the family family name will be given by the suffix so this why this will be tell you the suffix so the suffix will tell the family right so when there is a suffix when there are many uh, substituent to identify the substituent or prefixes you have to number from the nearest end of the family or the functional group okay so when you are num after numbering right so you have to give the number to the side chain such that some of those numbers some of those uh, numbers assigned to that carbon containing the substituent right if you add that it will become it will lead to less number or lower uh, low, uh, lower value right the integer which you are going to get should be lowest in number right so that is called as lowest home rule so select the longest possible chain uh, right hand identify the family and you number it from the nearest end of the family then assign the number so that the substituent will have least and lowest number so this is what is to be now chemical reactions are nothing but breaking and making of bonds if at all bond breaks a bond can break exactly at the middle of the carbon carbon bond so by that each carbon takes its share of electron this carbon takes its share that is one electron this carbon will take other its share that is another electron that leads to fission reaction so this is homolytic fission or cleavage homolytic fission or cleavage this will end up in the carbon containing one unpaired electron so if an unpaired electron is present on a carbon that unpaired electron or the species is called this species is called as free radical this is obtained by homolytic fission reaction other breaking is one among the two one of the carbon will take both the electrons either it could be carbon or any element so both the electrons the electron of itself as well as the electron of the its partner with which it, it had the bond so here with this electron is from this carbon this electron from this carbon when the breakage takes place one will lose its electron to the other so as a result this cleavage is called as heteroatom is different it is not at this exactly at a symmetrical point it is at a different point so this is as lost this loses electron this gains the electron right against the electron this cleavage is called heterolytic cleavage right so this still leads to this homolytic cleavage leads to either carbocation cation or carbon anion one loses electron becomes cation one gains electron becomes carbon anion carbon anion so the stability of carbon cation and carbon anion is important how it is important if the carbon positive charge which is there the positive charge is due to loss whatever the loss which has happened to this carbon has to be what uh, satisfied so that means the loss has to be fulfilled right the loss has to be sorry uh, has to be what uh, paid to this carbon what is that the carbon has lost the loses the electron to become carbocation so what group will stabilize this electron rich which will connected to that can supply electron and stabilize this stabilization is by gaining the electron so the electron uh, this carbon species is electron deficient species the deficiency has to be uh, what uh, fulfilled or deficiency has to be uh, uh, fulfilled in such a way that whatever the deficiency which is there has to be given by other groups if it is given by other group then this gets stabilized so this will be stabilized by plus inductive effect plus resonance effect or plus electromagnetic effect right okay whereas in carbocation this is by giving all are by giving whereas carbon anion anion is a charge so electron this is electron rich so it will stabilize if this electrons are been shared by the groups which are present there that means this has to be taken away from the carbon so stabilization taking place in a taking place by keeping a taking away the electron from the carbon right so this is giving the electron that is plus effect here taking the electron is minus effect minus resonance effect minus electromagnetic effect that will stabilize the carbon anion plus i plus r plus c will stabilize the 
carbon cation so stabilization of carbon cation will also happen from the hyperconjugation hyperconjugation is nothing but no bond formation between carbon and hydrogen this will happen with the ch3 ch3 will give the no bond formation will lead to the no, that no bond formation gives a plus i effect right so this will give plus i effect okay so this is what is important okay this uh, plus r and resonance and electromagnetic effect is most um, important in uh, pi bond uh, compounds right a compound containing pi bonds so that's what so here in this reaction so if this is electron electrophiles and nucleophile are the intermediates carbocation is also an intermediate which is formed by the uh, which will involve in the reaction electrophile electron means electron file means living electron is a negative charge so if the spy this species is an electrophile means that means it likes the electron why it likes it doesn't have that what is that negative charge is not there then what should be here on this electrophile positive charge has to be there electron rubbing group means it should have the positive charge because electron is negative if this is positive then it can likes the negative so electrophile is an electrically uh, positively charged ele electron deficient center right electron deficient uh, center it will go and attacks the electron rich center nucleophile nucleus loving nucleus is positive charge so hence it likes the positive charge means this is negative charge nucleus loving means negative charge species it will go and attack the electron deficient center right so h minus is example c minus n cyanide ammonia with lone pair of electron these are all the examples for nucleophiles and this is for the electrophile so there are certain compounds which are having the same molecular formula but different properties same molecular formula and different properties and they are called as isomers and the phenomenon is called as isomerism in this there are two class one is structural isomerism other one is stereo isomerism what is it the compound of the same molecular formula but different in the differ in the structure hence they are called as different uh, structural isomerism so the compounds having the same molecular formula and also same structural formula but the behavior will be different right okay that will be different so they are called as stereo isomers what is that let us see that okay so here structural isomerism there are chain isomerism chain isomerism is carbon chain here that there will be change in the carbon right the ch carbon chain will vary that means my structurally their variation is with the carbon chain so here difference in the carbon chain metamers differ in the position of polyvalent atom for example ch3 ch2o ch2 ch3 if o is pushed to the pushed it between ch2 and o uh, ch3 then we will be having ch3 ch2 ch2 o and ch3 they are called as metamers functional right they differ in the functional property functional behavior right behavior is different for example ch3 ch2 oh oh is the alcohol i'll keep uh, move the hydrogen to the ch2 then that ch2 becomes ch3 and keep the oxygen between ch3 and ch3 there you will get you will get ch3 o ch3 that is ether so functional groups are different compounds are the same for the molecular formula but functional groups are different next position so a position compound of the same molecular formula position of the functional group will be different ch3 ch2 ch2 oh oh is on the terminal carbon it is alcohol that is one propanol if ch3 oh moves to the middle carbon then it becomes ch3 ch oh ch3 that is two propanol so there only difference is the position of oh group is different and they are called as positional isomers then optical isomers it will change the optical property of the material um, optical pro because of that material optical it will exhibit the optical activity whereas geometrical isomers are, um, isomers are those where in which the configuration across the double bond will be different if the similar group is on the same side say cis isomer if they are on the opposite side trans isomer so this is about isomerism so in general i told you about uh, basic principles involved in the uh, compound organic compounds so what is hybridization what is catenation what is sp3 hybridization sp2 hybridization sp2 hybridization sp and the structures corresponding to that classification of organic compounds acyclic compounds cyclic compounds in cyclic heterocyclic that's all that means here homocyclic and other heterocyclic homo means same hetero means one of the element one or the other elements or one or more elements in the cycle 
could be other than car nitrogen sorry carbon so they are heterocyclic and eh? among the homolytic of the cyclic compounds they are will be homocyclic of the compounds it could be cyclic aliphatic cyclic compound they are called as alicyclic aromatic cyclic compounds right that is they are again further divided into benzonoid compounds and non benzonoid compounds right okay so that is the classification that you can give and among the acyclic compounds it is saturated compounds or unsaturated compounds so this will include ev almost everything uh, which is involved with the breaking making intermediate species carbocation carbon anion nomenclature and the structures of the material hybridization all are there in this so hope this will help all the best